Okay. Hello, everyone. Today is Saturday, February 17th, 2024. Uh, I spent a few hours today uh, taking down notes with the Lord. He wants me to do an exhortation. The title, uh, as you can read uh, below, is uh, Stop Harming Your Vigor and Fortitude. Your Vigor and and fortitude. Um, I'm still not financially comfortable enough to be able to afford this subscription, to be able to share my screen and do things more efficiently. Um, you can go ahead and look up the definition of vigor and fortitude on your own in the description box below. Maybe I'll put that for you. Um, If I was able to share my screen with that software, uh, I would, you know, pull that up right now. But you can go ahead and look that up for yourself. Get out your Bible. Um, get out maybe a highlighter um, if you like to take notes. This is going to be a sermon, an exhortation. Uh, I would hope for most of you it's just a reminder. But for some of you, this may be scripture that you're not familiar with. Or maybe you, again, you know, maybe you have forgotten about it. Um... So I'm going to open in prayer because I do believe the Lord wants me to just, you know, flow in his spirit. So let's do that. Father God, Yahweh, Holy Spirit, Yeshua, the Christ of Nazareth. Once again, Lord, I just come to you and I plead the blood of Yeshua, the Christ of Nazareth over my entire domain. I ask you, Father God, Yahweh, in the name of Yeshua, the Christ of Nazareth, will you please put a hot coal over my tongue and prevent me from saying anything that is not true and anything not coming from you, anything you don't want me to say or how you don't want me to say, I ask in the name of Yeshua, the Christ of Nazareth, will you please quicken your Holy Spirit within me and give me a check in my spirit if I am about to cross any boundaries, Lord. Um, Yeshua, I ask, will you please breathe into me afresh, overflowing your Holy Spirit, and your peace that surpasses all comprehension, emotions, moods, and circumstances. I ask you, Holy Spirit, in the name of Yeshua the Christ of Nazareth, will you please baptize me afresh with your fire, with your words, with your presence, with your wisdom, with your insight. I ask you, Holy Spirit, in the name of Yeshua the Christ of Nazareth, will you please give me the right articulation? Will you please remind me of any further scripture that is relevant, any... Um, analogies from scripture. I ask you, Holy Spirit, in the name of Yeshua, the Christ of Nazareth, will you please remind me of any examples that I know of, um, whether it has been an experience, an observation, etc. I ask, Holy Spirit, in the name of Yeshua, the Christ of Nazareth, will you please just speak through me, Yeshua, Yahweh, will you please speak through me for the edification of those listening and watching, Will you please come and have your way? I ask for your presence. I invite your presence, Lord. And I ask that the words I say in this recording would be only your words and not my own. I ask for your presence, Lord. I ask for your words. I ask for all of this in the name of Yeshua, the Christ of Nazareth. Okay, so exhortation. Stop harming your vigor and fortitude! Exclamation mark. The scripture to go along with the title is 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 27. But I discipline my body and bring it into subjection, lest when I have preached to others, I myself should become disqualified. And lest, if you don't know what that means, it means um, that if you don't do the first thing, then the second thing is what could happen, okay? But I discipline my body and bring it into subjection, lest when I have preached to others, I myself should become disqualified. Holy Spirit, I ask again, Yeshua Yahweh, will you please just flow through me, Lord? Let it just be a, uh, a fluid continuity of your words, Lord, in this recording. I ask for this in the name of Yeshua, the Christ of Nazareth. Amen. Immediately, what's already coming to my mind is, you know, hear how it says, when I have preached to others, you're supposed to be preaching to others, okay? What, what immediately comes to mind is that passage that says uh, that you should have been teachers by now, you know, um, 
uh, there's that other passage, uh, I think it might be the same passage, but it's, t you know, it talks about, um, I can't quote it exactly, but basically, kind of like honing your discernment. And all discernment is, is just receiving and recognizing communication from Holy Spirit, from Yeshua, from Yahweh. Um, through, through practice, basically, I think different translations phrase it differently. It says, you know, by, by way of reasoning, um, which could be a little misleading with how that's phrased because some people get carried away with their intellect and there are counterfeit spirits of cognition and logic. Um, but God is very disappointed with how immature the church is, with how the church is a bunch of babes, with the lack of faith of people, with the, with how the church is asleep, with how the church is lukewarm, with how, with the lack of faith. So, I clarified with him. I said, "Lord, is this is this an admonishment or is this an exhortation?" He said, "No, it's an exhortation." He wants it to be. A pot like framed positively of like, okay, here's what I want you to do. Okay. So there's four talking points and each of those have, um, you know, sub points to them in the description box below. I will type out the entire outline for you with the scripture and anything else the Lord tells me to put in there. <clears throat> so number one, the first talking point is consecration. Now, most of you, I assume, most of you have been with me uh, for the majority of this channel. I, I started this channel, I think it was like late March of 2020. And, um, you know, there's like five or 10 or 15 people that kind of like come and go. I, I see the, the number of subscriptions kind of go up and down. Um, there's people that kind of come in and go out and whatever. But I think the majority of you have been here for a while. So you know that I have been God has been leading me to preach on certain themes, certain topics, over and over and over and over and over again. I've got my laptop propped up on some books right now to get a better angle, so hopefully it won't drop, but if it does, bear with me. Um, consecration has been one of those topics. Consecration has been a big topic, because if you don't consecrate yourself, you won't be conveyed into the kingdom, as it says in Colossians chapter 1. Okay, You will die a carnal Christian meaning you'll you'll go to the lake of fire okay there are m most of the church most of the church is in the inner court they are carnal christians they are lukewarm they believe that yeshua is god that you know excuse me that, that yeshua is the son of god that he is the messiah he is the christ they know that but just like it says in scripture you know whoopie do even the demons know that and tremble right i think it says that in peter okay It's not enough to just believe that he is the Christ, he is the Messiah, he is the Son of God. It, it's not enough to receive him as your Savior because you want forgiveness of your sins so that you can go to heaven. That's kind of like using God, okay? It's not enough to just stop there. And most of the church stops there. And I have gone over, over and over and over, you know, what consecration is. It's repenting of your sins, which, you know... I. With, with the emphasis being particularly, especially on your idols, right? Um, but also pursuing deliverance. Now, I have gone over that over and over and over. And the Lord said, we're not harping on that anymore because we need to go deeper because people aren't getting it. People aren't changing. So for consecration, he gave me four sub points. Point letter A or number one obedience. So let's go to the book of 1 John. And for each of these, he gave me scripture. So let's go to the book of 1 John. Again, I apologize. I have to do this the old-fashioned old way of just flipping through my Bible, which takes more time. It's not as efficient, but I'm still, I'm still living in motels, hotels, Airbnbs, because people haven't been tithing or donating as, as they're supposed to. I'm still not financially comfortable enough to afford the software where I can share my screen and just pull up scriptures and pull up 
different uh, things, you know, that we're talking about on the internet. So bear with me. First John chapter two, verse five through six. But whoever keeps his word, capital H, truly the love of God is perfected in him. By this, we know that we are in him. He who says he abides in him ought himself also to walk just as he walked, referring to Yeshua. Okay, let's read that again. But whoever keeps his word, Yeshua, truly the love of God is perfected in him. By this we know that we are in him. He who says he abides in him ought himself ought to walk just as he walks. See, here's the thing. Yeshua told us, that he is the vine, we are the branches, that we must uh, abide in him, we must remain in him. And that's the problem. Most of the church is in the inner court. It's not in the Holy of Holies. They're, they're not in the Holy of Holies. They haven't been conveyed into the kingdom. They uh, are carnal Christians. They are not abiding in Christ. They are not remaining in him In order to remain in him, you have to get in him in the first place. You have to get conveyed into the kingdom in the first place. And if you're not repenting of your sins and your idols, and you're not pursuing any deliverance, see, I'm at the tail end of my own personal deliverance process. And God took me the long way. And just recently, he showed me the shortcuts that I'm soon going to be this year teaching on this channel. The shortcuts, the, the efficient way. The, the easy way, the quick way to get deliverance. But he took me the long way so that I would comprehend and really appreciate how important deliverance is and all the mechanisms in the invisible spiritual realm. And see, here's a deep truth that a lot of people aren't going to like. And because they don't like it, they're uh, uh, because they don't like it, a lot of people are going to reject this truth. But the truth is, is that each and every person is loaded with evil spirits in their domain and their atmosphere, okay? Your domain is, um, and I'm, I'm kind of getting ahead of myself, but in your domain, you have, there's, there's 713 types of evil spirits. And in your domain, there are 713 windows and there's 713 doors, okay? And the windows is where... Um, Evil spirits come in and they just harass you. You haven't come into agreement with them. They just harass you. Um, that's what you're captive to. As it says in Isaiah 61, okay? It talks about setting the captives and the prisoners free, okay? Then there's the doors. The evil spirits who come in through the door, you invited them in. You gave them permission somehow, some way. You came into agreement with them, okay? Whether that's listening to secular music, um... There's all kinds of examples, but some are not, not necessarily appropriate. Uh, whatever the case may be, okay? So you've got that going on in your domain, but then there is your atmosphere. There's 713 windows in every single person's atmosphere, and that is where evil spirits come in that were dispatched against you through witchcraft, okay? And you can have personal... Personal enemies that are dispatching witchcraft against you specifically. But then there's also high-ranking witches and warlocks and all that, and they are dispatching witchcraft just against Christians in general, against prophets, against the priesthood, uh, against people in general, you know, what have you, okay? Every single person needs deliverance. And part of getting conveyed into the kingdom Part of, part of getting into Yeshua, into the kingdom, into the Holy of Holies, into being the bride and not just the church, is you have to pursue some deliverance. You have to make some effort, some pursuit. God wants to see some effort being made. And most people are not pursuing any deliverance because they don't believe, first of all, because they're not even being taught this truth that they need deliverance. A lot of people don't accept this truth and they say, I don't have any, any evil spirits. Yeah, you do. Yeah, you do need deliverance. Okay. 
it says in scripture that our struggle is not against flesh and blood. It's against the principalities, powers, rulers, and hosts, which are the four ranks of evil spirits. And what I've come to realize is that the vast majority of whatever you want to call it, problems, sin, issues, opposition, difficulty, struggle, as scripture says, it comes down to evil spirits. You've got your own evil spirits going on in your own domain and atmosphere that are influencing you to behave wickedly. And then you've got... Um, and, and your own spirits can actually influence other people against you to sin against you. And then you've got other people, they've got their own evil spirits in their domain and in their atmosphere, influencing them to act wickedly, to come against you, whatever, whatever, okay? Verse 6, he who says he abides in him ought himself also to walk just as he walked. Deliverance is important. And again, we're talking about consecration. Part of consecration is getting some deliverance, okay? The more you get rid of evil spirits, and let me be very specific here, okay? As long as you have not taken the mark of the you-know-what, because that's relevant in this time frame, we are the last generation. If you have not taken the mark, and you, were bo you, were, you are born in God's image, his D, you know, N to the A, okay? You're not... Uh, fallen angel people or reptilian or Nephilim, okay? As long as you are truly a child of, of God in terms of your blood and you have not taken the mark, again, going you know, which boils down to your blood, you need deliverance. And as you get rid of evil spirits, if you do it properly, which most people who are trying to pursue deliverance are not doing it properly, if you invite the Holy Spirit or if you do things in, in such a way that is ordained by God, those evil spirits leave and they don't come back, okay? We know that scripture tells us that an evil spirit will come back with seven more if it finds that space empty, right? Which is why it's important to always invite Holy Spirit, okay? Um, so the more deliverance you get, the more Holy Spirit comes in and replaces those evil spirits, and you have more discernment, you have more clarity, you have more peace, and you slowly, gradually become more righteous. You start walking as Yeshua walked, as it says here in verse 6. He who says he abides in him ought himself also to walk just as he walked, okay? It's evil spirits that influence you and kind of compel you to not walk as Yeshua walked, okay? To not behave as Yeshua behaved, to not behave righteously, but to behave wickedly, okay? So we're talking about consecration, that's point number one. Underneath consecration, the first topic here is obedience. Obedience. And I've taught on here, and I'll continue to preach and explain, what does obedience really boil down to? Trusting God. You're not going to obey someone, anyone, that you don't trust. And I, I... I know I'm being a broken record, but it's so, God keeps showing me how people don't trust God. You need to have a real conversation with God. You need to have a real conversation with yourself as to whether or not you trust God. And again, you may trust him in this one area over here, but not over here. Okay. A lot of people don't trust God regarding their finances. A lot of people don't trust God regarding relationships. Okay. Again, we are told in scripture that we are body, soul, and spirit. You know, you can break all this stuff down. Maybe you trust God more on a body level, but not a soul level, or vice versa. You know, maybe you trust God more on a spirit level, you know, whatever. Or maybe you don't trust God in, on really in most areas. But you need to really examine yourself right there. Have a conversation, sit down and ask Yeshua to, re to give you revelation of your own heart of your own self and say lord where do i not trust you show me where i don't trust you so let's pray that right now yes holy spirit let's just pray a prayer right now father god yahweh holy spirit yeshua the christ of nazareth we ask you right now 
in the name of Yeshua the Christ of Nazareth, will you please reveal to us, each and every single one of us, where and how we do not trust you, God. Amen. In order to obey, you have to trust God. It comes down, and, and that's where faith comes in as well, okay? Faith and trust kind of go hand in hand. Because when you trust God, you give him opportunity to come through and prove himself to you, which builds your faith, and then you trust him more, then your faith is built more, and it just keeps kind of going in that positive feedback loop, okay? In that positive cycle. Obedience. And we know from Scripture I think it's Deuteronomy 28. God promises us basically that we're going to be, be blessed out the yazoo and our comings and our goings if we are obedient, if we trust him. But it also says that if we are disobedient, if we are rebellious, if we don't trust him, if we are distrustful toward God, which means we're unfaithful toward God, we will be cursed. We can count on being cursed. And what God has revealed to me is like the actual technical definition of a curse is 1,000 spirits, 1,000 evil spirits coming to influence you and influence other people against you, okay? This is very serious stuff. People people who call themselves Christians, the, the, the church has no inkling how spiritual everything is. Everything has spiritual roots. Everything has spiritual roots. In terms of us being body, soul, spirit, how I like to teach it in terms of like trying to give you a visual, your body is the lowest part of your being. Then there's your soul. Your soul, you know, is, is your intellect. It's your heart. It's your emotions, your moods, all that, your free will, right? And then there's your spirit, right? And part of your free will is in your spirit as well. But your spirit pertains to, you know, the spiritual realm, and that's where you receive Holy Spirit, and that's where you receive evil spirits, okay? And that trickles down into your soul and into your body, okay? That influences your soul and your body. You have to decide to trust God, and you have to have an honest conversation with yourself and with Yeshua, and, and even, you know, Thank you, Holy Spirit. There's also the, the three parts of the Godhead. Okay, you've got Father God, Yahweh. You've got the Son, the Messiah, Christ, Yeshua. And then you've got Holy Spirit, okay? And I, 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 I did a teaching a while back breaking down the Godhead. And maybe I'll link that in, in the description box below for you. Um, just recently, YouTube isn't allowing me to put live links in in the description box. So I have to start putting links in the comments below and I'm not, I'm, and without jumping through their hoops, I can't pin comments anymore either. So somewhere below, whether it's in, in the description box below or in the comments, I will put um, the link to that teaching. But Father God Yahweh is our provider and our protector. Okay. Yeshua, the Christ of Nazareth. He is our savior. Obviously he is our friend. He, um, he, he, he is our confidant. He is our friend. And especially for us ladies, he is our husband. Okay? He is our... And for all of us, he, he should be our first love. Okay? Um, Holy Spirit is our teacher. Our comforter. Okay? Holy Spirit is the voice of wisdom. Okay? You may trust different parts of the Godhead more or less than others, okay? Me personally, in terms of the Godhead, I was more close with Holy Spirit first. Why? We could go into all kinds of, you know, family of origin type stuff, okay? Because the three parts do correlate to the family, okay? Father God Yahweh correlates to the father figure. Provision, protection, okay? Holy Spirit their, um, the attributes of Holy Spirit are more feminine, you know, teaching, comforting, counseling, things like that, okay? Um, and then Yeshua, um, he correlates to, like, our siblings and our friends, okay? There's a friend that sticks closer than a brother, right? Yeshua. Um, you may trust, I'm going all over the place, but this is what needs to, this is what needs to be taught and preached you may trust Father God Yahweh more than you do Holy Spirit. You may trust Yeshua more than you do Holy Spirit or Father God or, you know, whatever. Have that conversation as well. 
sit down and examine yourself and have a conversation with God and say, Lord, you know, where am I at with the God hit? You know, it, like, wh- where do I need improvement? And I, I came to realize that I was closest, like at first, I was closest with Holy Spirit because I felt Holy Spirit's presence and I just felt comforted. And that's what I really needed. You know, back when I really first started my relationship with God, I was so broken. I was so broken. I needed so much deliverance and healing, right? And so Holy Spirit was um, the part of the Godhead that I just felt most close with. Okay, then Yeshua, and then lastly, Father God, Yahweh. Why? Because I had, you know, poor father figures that didn't really provide and protect and yada, yada, yada. And, you know, okay, we can get into all that family of origin stuff, okay? But that does affect your relationship with God. So if, you know, if you, um, well, just bottom line, those are things to examine, okay? So you got the three parts of the Godhead. You can have a conversation with God about that, you know, Lord Father God, Yahweh, do I trust you? Yeshua, do I trust you? Holy Spirit, do I trust you? You know, because they bring, they, they function in different, um, ways. Okay. So you can examine that. You can examine, okay. In terms of trusting God, do you trust God more on a body level, a soul level, a spirit level? Okay. So those are two areas that you can have a conversation with God and say, Lord, where do I need to trust you more? And how do I do that? And can you help me do that? Right. Help my unbelief, right? So, we're talking about consecration. The first point of that is obedience. In order to obey God, you have to trust God. So that's something you really need to examine is, do you really trust God? Because what God has been showing me over and over and over and over and over again is that the vast majority of people really, when it boils down to it, they really don't trust God. Okay? Number two, under consecration, is zeal. Zeal. We're going to go to Romans. Romans chapter 12, verse 11. Not lagging in diligence, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. Now this is an excerpt out of one of Paul's run-on sentences. Okay. Um... And different translations uh, translate this differently. Not lagging in diligence, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. Now, how I always think of zeal, I I think of passion. You know, um, enthusiasm. Okay, that's something else that I am noticing. That, that That's one aspect of people being lukewarm, of being carnal Christians, being out in the inner court instead of in the Holy of Holies. One aspect of being lukewarm is this lack of zeal. Where is your passion for God? Where is your passion for the mysteries of the kingdom? Where is your passion for the things of God, for deliverance, for um, knowing him? Where is your passion? Where is your enthusiasm? Okay. Anything else you want me to say on that, Lord? Okay, moving on. The next point under consecration he gave me is determination. Determination. We're going to go to Colossians for this. Colossians chapter 3, verse 2. Set your mind on things above, not on things on the earth. Set your mind on things above, not on things on the earth. Determination. Okay, this is about where are your eyes set or fixed, so to speak, right? There's so many verses that I I can think of, you know, um, back in the Old Testament, there's that one verse that says, you know, um, God, our our eyes are fixed on you, um, I'm sure we can all think of that verse. I think it's Paul who says, you know, keep your eyes. I'm paraphrasing, but I think he pretty much says, you know, keep your eyes fixed on the prize, on the reward, right? Um, On Yeshua, okay? Determination. Determination is you refuse to give up. You refuse to back down. You refuse to be discouraged. You are going to get there. That is your resolve. Yes, that's a good word, Holy Spirit. Thank you. Resolve. Conviction. Resolve. 
you have made up your mind that you, you have a goal, your eyes are fixed on that goal, and you're going to get to that goal no matter what it takes. Nothing is going to get in your way. Nothing is going to discourage you. Nothing is going to prevent you from accomplishing that goal. That is determination. How many of you allow Satan to bully you, to intimidate you, to threaten you, to psych you out? How many of you allow Satan to persuade you and convince you to quit, to give up, to uh, compromise, to take a different route, to take a shortcut, quote unquote, when really the, the important things of God... Um, I know earlier I just said shortcut, but that, I probably shouldn't have used that word. But the things that really matter regarding your salvation and everything, there, there are no shortcuts, okay? Um, you're going to put in the effort and work out your salvation or you're not. And for those who want to quick try to jump on me, I am not saying that we earn our salvation. But it does say to work out your salvation. And I have been very intimate with the Lord for several years now. And he wants an effort, okay? It's your responsibility to work out your salvation. And it does say in Revelation that you will be judged by your works, according to your works, okay? Faith and works go together, okay? Faith without works is dead, as it says in what, James? Okay? Anything else on this, Lord? Okay, consecration, the last point. Vulnerability. Vulnerability. We're going to go to 1 Peter First Peter five seven. Casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you. Okay. For years, years and years and years when I was younger, you know, I I'm a verbal processor. I gotta talk everything out, and I usually get clarity when I talk everything out, right? And so I had to talk to somebody. I had to vent to somebody. And even earlier on this channel, before I got a lot of deliverance, I would come on here and I would vent, which was very, you know, not a good decision. You know, that was un, uh, undisciplined of me, unprofessional. Not that I'm trying to be professional per se on this channel, but, you know, um, it's not good to air all your dirty laundry, you know, and, and whatever, right? Lack of self-control. Self-control is a fruit of the Holy Spirit. Um, I had to call somebody, you know, and, and even before like this channel, like years and years back, right? I always had to call somebody. I had to talk to somebody and long story short, I have learned Yeshua is my best friend. Okay. A lot of us today, you know, I took that survey on the community page just recently. Well, not just recently, but somewhat recently about, you know, asking how many of you live in isolation, you know, and about... I think one third of you, give or take, I, actually it was like 39%. It was like almost 40% of you live in isolation. A lot of people, it, it's, 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 it's become very common these days that, where, that people have no, no support system. They have no friends. They have no family. Okay. And I'm in that group. Okay. I have no friends. I have no family at this point. I have no one. It's my cat and me and God. And that's it. Okay. I have learned and there are still moments where it is a little frustrating, but I have learned that Yeshua, I mean, who knows you better than God? No one's going to know you better than God. No one's going to comprehend you and accept you better than God, okay? And I used to want to run to all my other lovers, right, so to speak. I used to run to whoever, whoever would just listen to me, okay? And we have to be more disciplined than that. We have to be more wise than that, right? We're told to be as gentle as dove and wise as serpents. And especially now we need to, okay? Especially, especially now in these last days. You need to be vulnerable with God, okay? You need to really form a relationship with the Father, Yahweh, okay? And with Yeshua and with Holy Spirit. So again, we're going to go back to this topic of the all three parts of the Godhead, Okay? Again, maybe you're more comfortable with, with Yeshua than you are Father God Yahweh. Maybe you're more comfortable with Father God Yahweh than Holy Spirit. Whatever the case may be. But you 
need to learn that the three parts of the Godhead function in certain ways. And depending on whatever you need in that moment, that's the part of the Godhead that you really need to draw close to. Okay. Um, vulnerability, whatever you're going through, talk to God about it. Vent to God about it. Talk it out. Process it with him. Who is going to, who's, again, who's going to understand? Who's going to comprehend and accept better? And who better is going to give you, who, who's going to give you better counsel? No one's going to give you better wise counsel than God himself. Okay. You have to be vulnerable with God. So again, consecration. Yes, you need to repent of your sins and your idols and you need to pursue deliverance. But I've been preaching that and preaching that and preaching that and it doesn't seem to be going anywhere. So God said, okay, we're going to go deeper. We're, we're going to go to the more foundational levels of things. You need to trust God and be obedient. You need to, um, you know, figure out what are you really passionate about? Are you truly passionate about God? And if you're not, why is that? These are all things to examine. You need to be determined, okay? Especially in these last days. Are you determined that God, that nothing and no one, including evil spirits, nothing and no one is going to deter you from your goal, from your race, from running your race and getting your crown, getting your reward, getting into the Holy of Holies, getting into heaven, inheriting what God has for you, Okay, and you need to be vulnerable with God. Okay, you can't consecrate yourself and get conveyed into the kingdom and really work out your salvation, secure your salvation without being vulnerable with God. You cannot. It is impossible. You cannot go to heaven without having an, a vulnerable, intimate relationship with God. Okay, he's not a genie in a bottle. He's not a vending machine. He's not there for you to use, for you to wipe your feet on, for you to spit on, for you to disrespect for you to take for granted. He is there. He is a person. He is real. And he has a heart. And you can hurt him. And you can upset him. And if you harden your heart against him, over and over and over and over and over and over again, he, because he's not controlling, he's not manipulative, he's not dominating, because he respects the free will that he gave you, eventually he's going to say, fine, I accept that you reject me. And I'm now done. I'm now washing my hands. I'm not going to bother making any more effort with you. Okay. There is a point where God, God does get to that point where he will stop pursuing you because you're not pursuing him. Okay. Just like any other relationship. Okay. You need to respect God's heart. You need to revere him. Does that, is that sufficient Lord for consecration? Okay. Point number two. So again, we're doing an exhortation. Stop harming your vigor and fortitude. Point number two. Brotherly love. There's three sub points to this. Number one. Compassion. Let's go to the book of Ephesians. Ephesians chapter four. <clears throat> Chapter 4, verse 32. <sighs> Chapter 4, verse 32, Ephesians. And be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. Compassion. We're all broken to one extent or another. We've all been treated poorly to one extent or another. We've all endured abuse to one extent or another. Okay? And because we are in the last days, wickedness, lawlessness, sin is running rampant in our generation worse than it ever has before. Okay, and so that has created more brokenness, so to speak, more dysfunction, so to speak. And really, what I've really been learning is because of technology, Satan, evil spirits have more access to people. And it's so easy 
for people to come into agreement with evil spirits so significantly, like in like a magnitude, so significantly more and easier now than it was like a century ago, okay? Or two ago. You can come into agreement, like, okay, so for example, when people do lives on YouTube, you can come into agreement with not only the person who's running that channel with their, with their evil spirits, but everybody else who's watching at the same time, you can come into agreement with all those people's evil spirits, okay? Just to kind of explain the mechanics of what goes on in the spiritual realm. That's why I haven't done any lives on here, okay? Until I know that I am completely delivered of evil spirits in my domain and my atmosphere, I'm still working on my atmosphere right now, although spirits that came in that were dispatched against me through witchcraft, I'm not doing any lives because I don't want y'all to get to come into agreement with any of the spirits that I have in my atmosphere, okay? Um, this all contributes to how cold to the love of many waxing cold, okay? And that's where we're at. The love of many waxing cold. Or do you want me to get into personal examples? No. Okay, we're just going to keep things generalized. Okay. I'm sure you can think of plenty of examples where you have been treated without compassion. I'm sure you can think of examples where you have just been appalled and floored and amazed at the lack of compassion of people, whether it was toward you or someone else. And I would hope that you have examined yourself and realized that there's been moments when you have been cold to others. Okay? Compassion. And be kind to one another. Be kind. Be kind to one another. It's the kindness of God that makes us fall in love with him. It's the kindness. It's, it's his compassion. And we are supposed to be reflecting that. We are supposed to be showing that to the world. But instead, the church has been infiltrated and infiltrated and infiltrated by Satan so that now we are bitter and we are nasty and we um, go around pointing the finger and jump into conclusions and, you know, just treating everybody like crap, even within the church. Why? It, it, it's no wonder, like, how are we supposed to be laborers for the harvest of souls when we're not working out our own salvation, when we're not getting our own deliverance, when we're not treating ourselves, when we're not treating other people, other Christians, other people in general with compassion? Why would anyone who's not a Christian Look at the church and see the hot mess that the church is. Why would they want to be a part of the kingdom of God when all they see is, is this lack of compassion, this lack of love? And be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. Let me remind everybody that we were told by Yeshua that if we don't forgive others, God's not going to forgive us. There's a reason why it's called the golden rule, and we're about to get to it here. Point number three under brotherly love is empathy. Okay, this compassion and empathy kind of go hand in hand. Lord, are we done with compassion? All right. Next, submitting to one another. Brotherly love, submitting to one another. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 21. Submitting to one another in the fear of God. Now, that's a whole other topic right there. How the church is lacking reverence, the fear of the Lord. Okay? That is actually one of the seven spirits of God, by the way, in Isaiah 11, I think. Okay? Ask God to give you the spirit of the fear of the Lord. Okay? Ask him to give you reverence for him. People have not been taking God seriously, and I, I don't even have the articulation. Holy Spirit, please give me the right words. I, I, I just, I don't even have, I, I don't have the articulation as, as to how just pungent the lack of respect, the lack of reverence that I have observed in the church, in people regarding God. People don't care what he says, whether it's in scripture whether it's a rhema message, people don't care. People aren't interested in his will, which we're about to get to that here soon. People 
don't revere him as God when he is God. Okay? Submitting to one another in the fear of God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. So Holy Spirit just gave me the analogy, right? So we are all children of God. We're supposed to be brothers and sisters in Christ, right? Now, for the single children out there who didn't have any siblings, maybe you don't know what this is like, but I guess we could go with the with the with maybe the analogy of like uh, being in like a classroom in school. But what Holy Spirit just popped in my head is, you know, like when you're growing up and it's you and your siblings and your parents, right? Um, when your parent says, "Hey, you better behave and cut it out," and da 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 da, right? Like. And, and maybe you're picking on each other and fighting with each other and whatever. And then, you know, your, your parent puts their foot down and says, Hey, stop it. You know, treat each other nice, you know, whatever. In the fear of your parent, right? It, because you respect your parent, because you know that your parent has authority over you, you decide to, okay, snap into obedience and like, okay, right? And again, for the people who don't have siblings, you know, again, we could use the analogy of like school and like a classroom, like, okay, your, your teacher, your professor, well, my professor, uh, your teacher, your principal, okay, of like, you don't want to get in trouble. You don't want to go to, to detention. You don't want to get suspended. You don't want to um, have to sit in time out during recess, you know, whatever. And so you snap into obedience because you acknowledge that that person has authority over you, right? Submitting to one another in the fear of God. Where is the fear of God? No one, people are not submitting to one another. People, and, and yes, thank you, Holy Spirit. It requires humility. It requires humility. It requires you to stop dead in your tracks and say, you know what? I'm a sinner. I'm not perfect. I've done foolish things. I've made mistakes. There's things that I can look back and say, you know, where was my mind in that moment? How could I do that, right? There's things that we have gone to God and said, Lord, please forgive me for that, right? Why can't we cut somebody else some slack? Why can't we forgive them? Why can't we submit to one another? Or or even uh, there's other scenarios. You know, maybe it's not a matter of that person's doing anything wrong. Maybe this person has a word from God for you. Maybe this person is giving you some wise counsel. Maybe this person is rebuking you in love and correcting you and saying, look, you're off path right now like you are getting off path and you need to stop doing this and you need to repent and da, 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 and of course you don't like that you don't want to hear that that's a moment where you are to submit to one another that's where you are to recognize the conviction of the holy spirit coming through that person as god's mouthpiece in that moment and you're to submit and then, of course, there's just the hierarchy in the kingdom okay there are people that are appointed above you there is a hierarchy in the kingdom of god okay there are um there's the priesthood, and even in the priesthood, there's apostles that are above, you know, okay? So, submitting to one another in the fear of God. Where is your fear of God? Where is your humility? Lord, is there anything else you want me to say on that? All right, last point under brotherly love, empathy. This is the golden rule. Let's go to the book of Matthew. Chapter 7, verse 12. Therefore, whatever you want men to do to you, this is Yeshua speaking, do also to them, for this is the law and the prophets. This is why it's called the golden rule, okay? Because it's so important, and because, as Yeshua said, it sums up pretty much everything. It sums up a lot of what righteousness is. It sums up love. It sums up forgiveness. It sums up humility. It sums up respect. It sums up fear of God. Okay? Therefore, whatever you want men to do to you, do also to them, for this is the law and the prophets. And he said it again in the Gospel of Luke as well. But he told me not to reference that right now. Okay? Brotherly love. Empathy. Again, what is empathy? Empathy is putting yourself in the other person's shoes, is putting yourself in that person's position. Okay, if I were so-and-so right now, 
And then you take inventory of, 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 you know, what you know. Of course, you don't know everything, but you know what you know about that person, about their circumstances, about what they're going through. Okay. And you could even try to, you know, um, perceive things from their perspective and say, okay, you know, um, you could imagine scenarios. Okay. Well, maybe, maybe they come from a broken home. Maybe they didn't have a father figure. Maybe they got financial problems going on right now. Maybe they've got someone abusing them at home. You know, whatever. If I was in that person's shoes right now, how would I feel? And if that doesn't do it for you enough to cut them some slack or whatever, then yeah, then you can go on to, okay, well, maybe they've got something going on that I don't know about. Maybe they're being abused. Maybe they're this. Maybe whatever. Da, 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 da. Okay. Therefore, whatever you want men to do to you, do also to them, for this is the law and the prophets. Empathy, the golden rule. Treat others as you would want to be treated. Respect, patience, basically the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Respect, patience, kindness, being reasonable, being humble, being forgiving, being willing to listen to what's going on in that person's world. Just like you want someone to listen to you when you're trying to explain yourself as to, okay, this is why I've come to the conclusion I've come to, or this is why I'm acting the way I'm acting. Which, you gotta be careful with that, because sometimes we justify our sin, and we don't want to be doing that either, okay? But, empathy. Anything else on that, Lord? Okay, so that's it for brotherly love. Next. Point number three. Again, this is an exhortation. Stop harming your vigor and fortitude. Point number three. Accepting the Father's will. Accepting the Father's will. This has three points. Point number one, completing the will of the Father. Book of Matthew, chapter 7, verse 21. This is Yeshua speaking. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. What is Yeshua saying here? He's saying, if you don't do the will of my Father, you're not going to heaven. Plain and simple. So that alone, this verse alone, never mind all the rest of scripture. If you just look at this verse alone, that tells you, okay, let me, let me spell it out for you in case you haven't figured it out. That tells you, you need to be seeking the father's will. You need to be asking father God, Yahweh, what is your will? What do you want me doing? Why am I here? What is my purpose? Okay? Who? What is your path for me, God? What is the blueprint? What is your plan? What do you want me doing? And how? And when? And with who? Regarding everything. Regarding my money, which is your money, God. Regarding my relationships. Regarding my possessions. Everything. Everything that goes on in your world, in your life, you should be asking, Father God, Yahweh, what is your will? Do you want me eating? Yes, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Do you want me eating certain foods? Okay. Now, I came on here back in 2021, and I was talking a lot back then about food. And I talked about how the Lord told me that I was no longer allowed to eat ground meat unless I ground it myself. Okay. And then, and over the last few years, he has slowly, gradually removed more and more things out of my menu. I wasn't allowed to eat General Mills brand food anymore. I wasn't allowed to eat Cheerios anymore. Even just recently, when I wanted to get some oatmeal, he said, no, no more Quaker Oats. And then I, he, he told me to try some oatmeal of some healthy brand stuff, and I did not like it. <laughs> okay. Um, no more chocolate. No more caffeine. No, uh, no more cheese, no more milk, even lactose free milk. He told me to stop. And you know what's happening right now? If you're not aware, okay, they are recalling all kinds of stuff right now. They're, they're recalling ground meat. They're recalling cheese. There's a, you know, outbreak of listeria. Um, yada, 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 yada. Now, if I had not obeyed him and trusted him, I could be sick right now. And it was, it was only what? A few weeks ago. That I was, I had those Cheddar Bay biscuits and I came on here and I told y'all how I had the Cheddar Bay biscuits. I had a cheese product in the biscuit and I was in physical pain for three days. 
because in because I, technically I was disobedient. Okay, completing the will of the Father. What is His will for you? Okay, does He want you listening to secular music? I'm gonna tell you right now. No, He doesn't. Okay, because that is a way that your domain doors you could be letting in evil spirits. Okay. I remember a few years ago, I went and listened to a Stone Temple Pilots song. What was the name of it? Sex type thing. And then after that, I was like sexually aroused or whatever. Okay, I had whatever sexual spirits that came in just from me listening to that song. Okay. What is the will of the Father? There's a reason you exist. There's a reason he put you down here. There's a reason you're here. Okay, you have at least one purpose, if not multiple purposes. Your purpose is, what are you to accomplish? Okay, your calling is the demographic of people that you're to minister to. Who are you to minister to? Okay, are you to minister to women, to children? Are you to women, uh, uh, excuse me, are you to minister to people in prison? Are you to minister to a certain um, age group? Are you to minister to couples? Are you to minister to people who've been uh, trafficked as sex slaves? You know, Whatever. Who is your calling? Who? What demographic of people? What's your territory? Okay? Your territory is geographically in the earth. Where are you geographically supposed to be? Okay? What is God's will for you? And let me also just throw out the cat. Is it a caveat? That because we're in the last days and everybody's wicked and overall people are not coming into alignment with God's will... The people that are supposed to be part of your path and your plan because they don't come into alignment, your pan, your your pan, your plan, your path that God has for you may change. It may have to change. He may have to adjust it and tweak it because people aren't doing what they're supposed to be doing when they're supposed to be coming alongside of you and walking alongside of you. And I've been experiencing that for years now, okay, because I've had so much witchcraft dispatched against me. People are influenced against me and they don't come into alignment when they're supposed to, when they're supposed to be part of my plan, part of my path. And so God has to keep rerouting things, changing things, okay? You need to be in constant, unceasing prayer, as Scripture says, communication with God. Father God, Yahweh, what is the plan? What is the blueprint? Where, what do you want me doing? What is your will? Okay? What is your will? And if God puts something on your heart, and you, like, like consciously acknowledge it, and you even speak it out loud, and then you don't do it, you are so held accountable for that, Okay? A few weeks ago, I was at a Studio 6, a Motel 6, and the manager told me that God had been putting it on her heart that she was, you know, to play some kind of role regarding gathering people together for some kind of fellowship group. And I showed up and I said, well, I'm an apostle. I'm, I'm a prophet, you know, like, and God told me that I was going to make an, a, 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 I'm stuttering, a connection at this motel. So here we are. And I asked her, okay, when do you want to meet? Let me get settled in and then we can meet sometime. And we scheduled and she, she stood me up and then she kept blowing me off and da, 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 da. Okay. She did not come into alignment with God's will. And she has gotten herself in trouble with God. And unless she repents, she ain't going to heaven. It's just that simple. When God has an assignment for you and you're supposed to do it and you acknowledge even out loud, you verbally say that you're supposed to do it and then you don't do it, you don't do that. Just, just don't do that. Okay. Because even if you were in the kingdom, that right there alone is enough to, to lose your salvation. Possibly that right there is enough to get demoted in the kingdom. Okay. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Are you doing the will of Father God Yahweh? Are you or, or are you not? Because if you're not, your life is a waste. Plain and simple, black and white. That's what I've come to realize. And if you know that you're feeling stuck and stagnant, which by the way, there is a spirit of, of being stuck. There is a spirit of... of stagnation and that could be dispatched against you through witchcraft role you know or maybe it's something you came into agreement with or maybe it's something that is, is just harassing you you need to ask the lord lord i feel like i'm not on the right path right now i feel like i'm out of sync with you please help me to get synchronized with you what is the path what is your plan where am i supposed to be what am i supposed to be doing okay so where are we accepting the father's will number one completing the will of the father so let's just back up to 
the major point here, accepting the Father's will. A lot of times, God's will is something that makes you feel uncomfortable. You don't like it, okay? A lot of times, God is going to go for what I'm hearing is the word prejudice, okay? There was a woman a few years ago. She was supposed to be my armor bearer. She was one of the women that was supposed to be, she was ordained by God to be an armor bearer for me. And she was also supposed to kind of help me mature and mentor me somewhat, but she was also supposed to support me. And we were supposed to come together and partner in ministry and she made it very clear that because i was the same age as her son she didn't want to do that and then just recently this woman that was at the motel six she was old enough to probably be my mother and um i believe that god has revealed to me that she had some kind of prejudice or pride issue or whatever because i was younger than her she didn't like the fact that i was taking the lead okay and she didn't like the fact that i was telling her god's will that okay god wants us to meet in a library not here in the hotel Okay. And she didn't like that. Okay. You have to accept God's will, even when you don't like it, even when it, it, it doesn't line up with what you had in mind, what, what, okay, because he knows best. He's God. You're not. His ways are higher than our ways. His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. We know that from scripture, but are you living it? People love to quote scripture and you know, but, but are you, but do, do you believe scripture? Do you trust what it says? Do you live by it? Okay? Do you accept the will of the Father? God may ordain for you a spouse that's going to push your buttons. In fact, I guarantee you, he will ordain a spouse for you that's going to push your buttons because that's what the covenant of marriage actually is. It's someone who's there to help you deal with your crap, deal with your issues. That person is there to trigger all your evil spirits so that you both are motivated to get the deliverance that you're supposed to get. Okay. And people don't like that. Okay. God has ordained for me nine men now. Okay. Nine men. And there's one that comes to mind in particular. We would have been a very strong ministry couple together. Very, very, very strong ministry couple together. And there were things that both of us were impressed about by each other. And there were things that both of us were turned off by about each other. And we would have pushed each other's buttons. But if we had submitted to one another and submitted to God, we would have gotten married. But that person decided, oh, I'm getting triggered. I feel uncomfortable. I'm scared. I feel threatened. He didn't like that my ministry seemed to be progressing farther along than his was. Okay? This is all petty nonsense. You need to accept the will of the Father. So, number three, accepting the Father's will. And point number one, completing the will of the Father. Anything else on that, Lord? Okay, point number two, discerning discerning. So again, what is discernment? It's when you receive and recognize communication from God. Okay. Discerning when to be still and to execute. Okay. So we're going to go to the book of Ecclesiastes for this. It's basically ch uh, chapter three, verse seven. It's the second half of verse seven, a time to keep silence and a time to speak. Okay. Chapter three, the first section of chapter three, it says to everything, there is a season, a time for every purpose under heaven. Okay. And then it goes into, you know, a time for this and a time for this and a time for this. Okay. And what God is highlighting here is a time to keep silence and a time to speak. Discerning when to be still and when to execute. Lord, is there anything else you want me to say on this? Yes. I already mentioned that other passage. You want me to go over that again? No. What do you want me to say, Lord? Discerning when to be still and when and, and to execute. Accepting the Father's will. Okay, so accepting the Father's will. So just because you know, like, for example, um... Mm, that was something else. Okay, yeah. So let's use this lady a few weeks ago at this Motel 6, right? She knew that it was God's will to play some kind of role in gathering together people from that motel that had, you know, because there were people there. I, there was one lady that I had a brief conversation with in the laundry room, and she told me she'd been living there for two years, okay? There were people there that all had a rapport with her. 
and she knew that it was God's will to start some kind of fellowship group, right? And I prayed on it immediately, and God told me, okay, I want, y- I want y'all to meet in the library study room, and like ASAP, basically, you know, because as you guys know on this channel, God's been talking to me, God's been keeping me abreast of like where we're at, what, what things are, wh- what's going on, what's coming down the pipeline. We know that, you know, lock, you know, down is coming. We know that uh, probably medical, you know, martial, you know, law is probably coming. Um, we know that plagues are here already. Okay. If you're not aware in Oregon, there's already a case of the bubonic plague, which is what God told me back in 2021. I was the first one that I know of that prophesied that the fourth seal where it says death, it meant the black death. Okay. And then someone else more famous, like a month or a couple months later, she said the same thing and everyone oohed and ah to her. Okay. But bottom line, the bubonic plague is here. There's listeria. There's measles. There's some fungus thing. There, then there's the the new mutation of the uh, demic, which that may be the fungus thing. I forget. Um, what else was there? there? There's all kinds of plagues all, already here. Okay. And so I knew, I knew we needed to act with urgency. I knew that it was like, okay, her and I need to meet as soon as possible, get to know each other a little bit, get comfortable with each other and start organizing to gather this fellowship group, right? And this woman had this attitude, like she literally text messaged me and she said something to the effect of, oh, you know, I'm not in a rush, you know, God's not in a rush or something like that, blah, 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 blah. Okay, what point are we on? Discerning when to be still and when to execute, okay? You need to know, like in the moment, when to bite your tongue, when it's appropriate, you know, is it, is it, you know, um, the difference between, okay, do you pull someone aside and talk to them privately or do you expose them publicly? You know, um, when and where are you supposed to do things? How? Okay. All that kind of stuff. This requires discernment. And the best discernment is when you've gotten deliverance, you have less evil spirits or hopefully ultimately no evil spirits and you are totally filled with the Holy Spirit. Okay. Um, years ago, back in like 2018 or 19, I saw a sermon, I saw a teaching, and it was a false teaching, is is what I've come to realize now. I forget the guy's name. Um, He's famous, but he he had like a a glass of water, and he poured some water into it, and basically the point that he was making was that you can't be like partially filled by the Holy Spirit, and what I've come to realize is actually, the no, yes you can. And that's what is the case. Most people are majoritively filled with evil spirits and they only have a little bit of the Holy Spirit. And the more deliverance you get, the evil spirits leave and then the Holy Spirit fills up and takes up those those places, okay? Um, that's how your discernment increases. That's, that's how it becomes more clear, more sharp, okay? You need to know when to be still and when to execute you, and, and how and with who and all that, okay? Lord, is that sufficient? Okay. Accepting the Father's will. Point number three, electing, electing to be God's children. Okay, we're going to go to the book of John for this. John chapter one. John chapter one, verse 12. But as many as received him, okay, so this is, you've come out of the outer court into the inner court, you've received him as your savior, but as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become, to become, there's a, that right there, that word indicates that there's another transition. So you go from the outer court to the inner court when you receive Yeshua as your savior, but he gives you the right in the inner core as a carnal Christian, the right to become, I'm going to underline that, to become children of God to those who believe in his name. Okay. Become is where you go from the inner court to the Holy of Holies. It's where your it's where your salvation is actually secured. It's where you move out of just being part of the church into being the bride, okay? It's where you go from the inner court to the Holy of Holies, from the inner court to the kingdom, to like the kingdom in the sense of like heaven, like you're you're going to heaven, okay? 
electing. Okay? It's a decision. It's an intentional decision. To make an effort to take action to be conveyed from the inner court into the Holy of Holies, into the kingdom, into those who are going to go to heaven. Okay? And it requires some effort. It requires you to pursue getting some deliverance. It requires you to repent of your sins. It requires you to give up your idols. It requires you to consecrate yourself. It requires you to be holy, to be set apart and separate yourselves from the world. Do not conform yourselves to the ways of the world. Wow, it's dark out already. Where do I... Is that sufficient? Okay, now, point number four, the last point. Being a sheep. Being a sheep. There's three points to this. Point number one, mercy. We're going to go to the book of Matthew. Chapter five. Verse seven. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Hmm. Kind of sounds like the golden rule, doesn't it? Empathy. Treat others how you want to be treated. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Okay? Now, immediately, when God first spoke this to me, and he said, okay, number four is being a sheep. It was in the context as of... Um, as opposed to being a goat, okay? The sheep go to heaven, the goats go to hell, right? If you want to be a sheep, you need to be merciful. You need to be merciful to others. Unless God tells you to be shrewd towards someone, which sometimes he does, unless he gives you that conviction. Mercy. Anything else on that, Lord? Okay, next, suffering. We're going to go to the book of Romans. If you want God to be merciful to you, and if you want others to be merciful to you, you better be merciful yourself. Romans chapter 8. Verse 17. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if indeed, if, conditional, if indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. Suffer with him. If indeed we suffer with him. What does this imply? This implies so much, okay? This is one of those things where scripture is phrased in such a way where God wants you to pause. He wants you to think. He wants you to pray. He wants you to ask him, Lord, what does this mean? Okay? We are children of God. We are heirs, joint heirs with Christ, if, conditional, if we suffer with him. What does this bring to mind? It brings to mind where Yeshua said, pick up your cross and follow me. You cannot be my disciple unless you forsake everything and everyone else and pick up your cross and follow me. You have to crucify yourself. You have to die to yourself. You have to die to the world. You have to go through the cross if you want to resurrect and go to heaven as Christ did. If you want to be a child of God, if you want to be a sheep and not a goat, you need to pick up your cross how many of you aren't picking up your cross? So many of you. So, so many of you. The people in the inner court, the carnal Christians, the ones who have received him as savior, but they're not doing anything else. They're not making any more effort in their relationship with Christ. They're not picking up their cross. They're not dying to themselves. Anything else on that, Lord? Okay, last point under being a sheep forbearance. We're going to go back to the book of Ephesians. Forbearance. Chapter 4, verse 1 through 3. I, therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you to walk worthy of the calling with which you were called, with all lowliness 
and gentleness, with long suffering, bearing with one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. Now, I know it's one of Paul's run on sentences, but there's a lot there to unpack, okay? Therefore, I, a prisoner of the Lord. Now, that right there could be a lot, could, could be very confusing to a lot of people, but Paul did this quite often. He would call himself a prisoner of the Lord, a, sa a slave of God, a bond servant of God, okay? And he's trying, he's, 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 he's intentionally trying to get you to go, wait a minute, what does that mean? He's trying to get you to think, he's trying to get you to pray, okay? He's trying to prompt you and motivate you to ask God, to have an intimate conversation with God, okay? What this means, when, when you're a prisoner or something, you're being kept, right? On all four sides, so to speak, you really um, can't get out. And you're depending on the, on the prison guards, you know, to give you your, your food and your, your nourishment and all that. Okay. That's the context that he means this here is that he is being kept by God. Okay. God is surrounding him. God is who he is dependent on for his nourishment. Okay. Therefore, I, therefore, the prisoner of the Lord beseech you. He's begging you. Okay. To walk worthy, to operate, to behave, worthy of the calling of which you were called. Okay, and again, calling is who are you called to minister to, okay? If you're called to minister really to, to anyone, okay, which you are, there's a certain way you're supposed to be acting. You're supposed to be acting righteously. You're supposed to be acting appropriately, okay? With all lowliness, humility, humility, that means no chip on your shoulder, no nose up in the air, no arrogance, no pride, no conceit, no look at me, look at me, okay? And gentleness with long suffering, long suffering, bearing with one another in love, bearing with one another in love, endeavoring. Endeavoring means to make effort, okay? To make effort to keep the unity of the Spirit, capital S, Holy Spirit, in the bond of of peace. Meaning, the fruit of the Spirit, self-control, self-discipline, biting your tongue, being patient, being forgiving, trying intentionally to get along with people, to get along with your brethren, with your brothers and your sisters in Christ, instead of taking the first little thing you can to just jump, jump to a conclusion and, and turn on each other and condemn each other and start arguing and fighting and all this nonsense. And, and allow Satan to trigger you and allow Satan to cause all kinds of division, okay? Forbearance. This is so absent in the church. This is even absent in the Holy of Holies. Those who have secured their salvation, they're very, I'm, I'm not really seeing a lot of forbearance. I'm not seeing people being willing to have a conversation and say, okay, you know what? You and I have had a falling out. You and I, you know, things have gotten a little ugly between us, but... In reverence of God, let's sit down and have a conversation. Let's have a conference call. Let's have a phone call. If, if we can, let's meet up in person. You know, let, let's let's try to talk it out. Who's doing that? Who's doing that? Who's trying to be in unity for the sake of the kingdom of God? Who's trying to work things out? Overall, nobody. This is part of being a sheep instead of a goat. This is part of what is required to go to heaven instead of hell, okay? This is what it means to be a disciple. This is what it means to not conform to the ways of the world. The ways of the world, everyone in the world right now, everyone wants to just be mean to each other and turn on each other. Why is the church acting the same way? Why are you acting the same way? Unless God himself has given you the command and the conviction to shut the door on someone, which, again, he is doing that these days, depending, okay? But even but, but between brothers and sisters in Christ, be, be, between those of us who are born with his image, who have not taken the mark, we are supposed to be trying to work things out with each other. We are supposed to be coming together, as it says here, in unity, in the bond of peace, Exhortation, stop harming your vigor and your fortitude. 
We are not supposed to be in isolation, church. We are not supposed to be divided, bride of Christ, priesthood. We are supposed to be trying to work things out in unity, in peace, in harmony. We are supposed to be endeavoring. Where is the endeavoring? Thank you, Holy Spirit. Endeavoring. Let's underline that word. Endeavoring. Making an intentional effort. Where is the intentional effort to try to reconcile with people? Where is that? It, thank you, Holy Spirit. I'm being reminded of the passage. I don't remember where it is. It might be in Romans or Hebrews. But it says, you know, if, if you know that, you're, that, you, that you're, you're, your brother uh, has something against you or you against them or whatever, you're, you are to what? You're to stop dead in your tracks in your relationship with God. You're supposed to stop dead in your tracks right there and go to them. That's what it says. But who is making that effort? Who is endeavoring to try to reconcile, to try to make amends, to try to make peace, to try to work it out? And because no one is trying to work anything out and nothing is getting worked out, this is harming your vigor and your fortitude for these last days, church bride, beloved of, of God. You want to be his beloved? You want to be his bride? You want to go to heaven? You better start acting like the bride that, that Christ wants. We're supposed to be walking as Christ walked, right? That's what we went, went over earlier here. Are you walking? Are you operating? Are you behaving as Christ would? What would Jesus do, right? What would Yeshua the Christ of Nazareth do? You have to be willing to have uncomfortable conversations. You have to have that courage. You have to depend on God for your strength and your courage to sit down and say, hey, things got ugly, but let's, let's talk about it. Let's work it out. And be vulnerable with each other and submit to one another in humility. How many people actually do that? Do you sit down? Do you, do you contact someone and say, hey, I really believe that we should sit down because of scripture and, you know, cite the scripture and then sit down together. And even though you've got your differences and even though you, you may be hurt and you may be angry and whatever, 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 whatever misunderstanding, do you sit down and pray together and just open the, the conversation up in prayer and invite God's presence in and say, Lord, we know that things have gotten yucky between us, but we love you and we put you first and we seek your kingdom first so that all these other things can be given unto us. We invite your presence and we invite you to Put your finger on what needs to be dealt here. What needs to be dealt with? What do we need to repent of? Who, you know, what, what needs to be forgiven? What, what needs to happen, Lord? Guide us. Who's doing this? No one's doing this. People get rubbed the wrong way and it's, oh, I'm blocking you. Again, who do you need to apologize to? Who do you need to forgive? Who do you need to apologize to? Who do you need to make amends with? Stop harming your vigor and fortitude, says the Lord. Anything else, Lord? Are we done? I think that's it. So, everything, all the notes will be in the description box below with the scripture. And, um, you know, I'll, I'll go listen to this. I think I said I was going to link a video, maybe. So, in the description box and or the comments is where I will put stuff. Look for that. If you have any curious questions, you're always welcome to reach out to me via email or in the comments. Um, keep in mind that YouTube does mess with this channel. So, I may not see your comments because YouTube hides comments from me quite a bit. So, just be aware of that. If I don't respond to your comment, um, most of the time that can mean that YouTube is messing with stuff okay I, I very rarely don't reply or don't respond or don't like heart a, a comment or whatever okay i bless you all in the name of yeshua the christ of nazareth